In this problem, we're told a 65 kilogram basketball player jumps vertically and leaves the floor with a velocity of 1.8 meters per second upward. A, what impulse does the player experience? B, what force does the floor exert on the player before the jump? And C, what is the total average force exerted by the floor on the player if the player is in contact with the floor for 0.45 seconds during the jump? Right, so this is just an image of what's going on, right? So we have this basketball player. And so in the beginning, they're gonna be traveling zero meters per second, right? Because they're just standing still. And then after they're going to jump and they're going to be traveling 1.8 meters per second in the upward direction right so but knowing that let's just go ahead and start with a so for a we're trying to find the impulse the player experiences so we denote impulse by i and so i the impulse is equal to the change in momentum that's what you have to know and so what is momentum equal momentum is equal to mass times velocity that's another formula you have to know and so if we're finding the change in momentum right because that's what the impulse is the change in momentum is just going to be m times v final minus m times v initial, right? Because it's just going to be the final momentum, which is this, minus the initial momentum, right? And keep in mind, m is the same because the mass just stays constant throughout the interval, right? So if we can factor out an m, right, it's just going to be v final minus v initial. All I'm doing is taking out an m from both terms. So this is going to be the change in momentum, right, which is equal to the impulse. So if we want to find the impulse, we just have to do m times v final minus v initial, right? And we can do that. So the mass, we know the mass of our individual is 65 kilograms. So we have 65, V final, in the final interval, they're traveling 1.8, right? And then V initial, they're not moving at all, right? So minus zero is just the same thing as the number. So it's really just 65 times 1.8. And if you plug this in, 65 times 1.8, you're going to get the impulse is equal to 117, and then the units are going to be Newton seconds. So Newton seconds, that's going to be your impulse or your answer to A. So 117 Newton seconds. That's your answer to A. And now let's move on to uh, B. So for B, right, what are we trying to find for B? So B, we're trying to find what force does the floor exert on the player before the jump? So think about how this works, right? So we're saying the, for the force the floor exerts on the, uh, the player, right, before the jump. So if we draw the free body diagram, right, we have mg going down. And then the force that the floor is exerting, right, is just the normal force, right? You can think about it like that, right? Because the object is just going to push back whatever force is being applied downwards. Right? And we can find this by taking the sum of the forces in the y direction. Right? And so they're going to be equal to zero. Why is that? Right? Because force equals mass times acceleration, and keep in mind it's velocity is zero. Meaning if it's velocity is zero, its acceleration is also zero. So zero equals, and then we can add up the forces in the y direction, keeping the ones that go positive or upwards positive and the ones that go downwards negative. So F sub n is positive minus mg because it's down. Right? And this just tells us F sub n is equal to mg. Right, and that's pretty obvious just looking at it. That's something you should know by now. So the force it's going to exert is just its mass times gravity. Right, back at it. So its mass is 65, and multiply that by the gravity, 9.8. So this one's pretty basic. Just do 65 times 9.8, and if you do that, you'll get 637. So 637, we measure force in newtons. So 637 newtons. So this is going to be your answer to B. Right. So the force the floor is exerting back on the player. So that's. So now let's go ahead and do C. So for C, we're trying to find the total average force exerted by the floor on the player if the jump is in contact with the floor for 0.45 seconds, right? So the change in time or the contact time is 0.45 seconds. So how do we solve for this? So the first thing we want to do is find the net force, right? So the force he's going to jump up with. And so how do we find that? So the net force is equal to, and so in this case, it's just equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. That's how you can find how much force they're jumping with. Uh, ignoring the other forces, right? So the change in momentum is just the impulse, right? Remember from here? So it's just going to be 117 divided by the contact time, which is 0.45. And if you go ahead and do that, you're going to get 260. So 260 newtons is going to be the net force. But keep in mind, this isn't our answer because we have to take into account gravity. So we know the net force is going to be equal to 260 newtons. This means that the sum of the forces in the y direction, right, is just equal to 260 newtons, right? And this time it was zero, right? Because there was no acceleration, but now it's 260 newtons. So we know 260 newtons is equal to what forces do we have in the y direction? Just like last time we had F sub n minus mg, right? Because F sub n is positive and then minus mg. So we want to find the force the floor is exerting. It's just equal to F sub n. So F sub n is just equal to mg plus 260. m is just uh, 65 times g, which is 9.8, and then plus 260. So if you go ahead and do this, 65 times 9.8, right? 65 times 9.8 and then plus 260. If you do that, you'll get 897. So it's 897 newtons. That's going to be the normal force or the force that the floor is exerting right during this time. So your answer to C, 897 newtons. Answer to B was 637 newtons. And then this was your answer to A. But yeah, so these are your answers and hopefully you found this useful.